goodness are you in for a treat so you do know about my friend steve sims if you don't know about him you've absolutely been under a rock somewhere god bless you but get out from under the rock um steve sims is he's we've been friends for it's a couple years now hasn't it been like yeah doesn't time flies so uh we've been friends for a couple of years he's got the best family all, I mean, just we do stuff like he's got speakeasy events that are awesome. He's got a book called Blue Fishing, which if you don't have it, you need it now. And then he has done it again. We just had um, a launch party. There was a book launch party in L.A. That's where Mike and I were. And uh, he launched the book while we were there. And within eight hours, Amazon bestseller. So I'm just saying... He's the real deal. So thanks for coming in, Steve. I appreciate you. If I get a call hey, from Martha going, hey, Steve, do you want to jump on at 8 o'clock in the morning? And I'm actually just guzzling through my coffee to stay awake. There's no way in the world I'm going to say no. So thank uh, you for inviting me. <laughs> you got it, man. Well, I want – so the people that, that you know – uh, it feels weird to say people that follow me. They're not followers. They're like friends, right? So my friends that watch this video or watch my videos, um, they are creatives. And they're not necessarily creatives in that they paint and, and whatever. They creatively choose new ways to live outside mm -hmm. of what we're told and all of these things. And I know that that is something that you are just like, that's it's in your DNA mm. to to not take no for an answer and to just ask, just to ask the question, right? Blue fishing was all about it. What, what kind of like sage advice do you have for people today, right now, um, that, that are this kind of person in the world? Oh, it, it's easy and it sounds easy, takes a little bit more effort, but can easily be done. It's your standards. It all starts with your standards. You know, pick, you know, if you've got some tatty old socks and you're willing to wear them, then that dictates your standards. They always say you're as strong as your weakest link. Make sure your weakest link has impeccable standards. If your wallet's a little bit frayed, if your belt and your shoes don't match, just follow those kind of simple standards. And then those standards will actually emulate into your business, into your relationships, who you're willing to take time with. And your standards will suddenly become a gravitational force that people will go, hey, I want to live like those standards. And nothing that I've just mentioned is expensive. I'm not yeah. saying sitting here going, hey, your standards, you have to have a Bentley. I'm saying it has to be clean. I don't care what you're driving, what you're doing, how you're walking, but have the standards on the smallest part and you'll be amazed how that will trigger up. Yeah. And he's not even saying, guys, I mean, look at him. He's not even, to, I'm sorry, Steve, <laughs> but he's not even. <laughs> that was and it's so, uh, I've spent a few days getting attacked by some, some pretty cool people, but that really hurt. <laughs> I'm just saying he's not, he's not saying you need to be, have your Birkin bag and your Hermes, you know, um, head to toe. He's not s saying you need all of that. Cause he walks around in a black t-shirt, black jeans and some Vans, um, sneakers like that. So understand that when he's saying like your standards, he's not saying you need to make a ton of money and buy some really expensive things. He's mm. saying like, he's saying, be respectful, honor the things you own because that shows honor back to yourself and then out into the world. Right. Do you know this, this taught me a lesson years ago yeah. and it's really silly. This is a big gel pen the okay. pilot g2 i think you can get a pack of 50 for like three bucks Great. but i remember going to an event once and someone had this pen and i really liked it for just a day to day this is my standard of pen and here's the daft thing i won't use another pen i've got another pen for when i sign contracts but on a day to day i use this pen walk into someone's office and see if the top's chewed and then think to yourself, is that someone I want to deal with? And here's the worst thing. We're all having these standards about other people and what they should be. We need to start being the standards we want to see in other people. Are your pen tops chewed? Now, that doesn't cost any money whatsoever. But if you're okay to let that go, what else are you letting go? Okay. That was a sucker punch. That's not nice. So, um, <laughs> I just... 
just kidding. So uh, you said you said like we need to we need to back up just for a second. So you said um, have the standards for yourself that you would expect in other people. Yeah. And I think somebody needs to create a quote card out of that that's watching um, because that's excellent advice. Um, there's like behavioral stuff, you know, around like the golden rule and blah, blah, blah. But from a standards basis, like what, why would we expect more out of other people than we're willing to do for ourselves? And, and then there's the whole question whenever you look at, because those habits of chewing your pen and whatever, whenever you're able to look at those, you may even realize you got some deeper stuff that needs to be worked out, but that needs to be worked out. We can't ignore those things. So um, I love, that's great. That's great. Today we, <clears throat> today we need to have conversations. We needed to have conversations before COVID. We yeah. needed to focus on communica uh, communication. Yep. COVID came across and gave us wonderful excuses not to communicate with each other. I know we kept on chatting. Yeah. Yet that, the whole world's going, oh, I can't communicate. And I'm thinking, well, hang on. I just jumped on with Martha 10 minutes ago, and we, yeah. we missed and ranted for an hour. So where's your problem? And so a lot of people was using it as an excuse period. And now there's actually there's actually something called social hangover. It's where people can't be within too many people because they get worn out because it's a muscle that we haven't used. Oh, we haven't no. hung out with each other. So we're getting, we were bad at communicating. We excused ourselves on how bad we were at communicating and we're doing nothing about it. But I still believe today, the first conversation you need to have is with yourself have that conversation who do i want to be yeah. where do i want to be who do i want to be the person showing up how do i want someone else to see me and i want someone to see me you say about my black t-shirt yeah. bottom line of it is no one's ever confused when they meet me they like me <laughs> or they hate me yeah. and both of those situations are absolutely fine I just want to allow them to be able to make a decision on whether or not they want to engage me in a conversation. Yeah. But for that reason, I've got to be crystal clear and I've got to have the conversation to know who I am first before I allow you to see me. Yes. Oh, so, so good. I don't even think we have time to unpack how good that is. Um, <laughs> like, I, I'm seriously deliberating. Can we? No, I don't think we can. Um, Tell me your favorite, so the new book, let's talk about the new book. So tell me your favorite part. There it is, Go For Stupid. Isn't that great? Who doesn't want a book called Go For Stupid? Like oh, I want no, it, I, love it. I want lots of them. So uh, what's your favorite part of the book or what, what do you think is going to be the most impactful for people? Yes, I'm making you do this live. All right. Okay, that's that's good, and that's actually two questions. The thing that's going to be most impactful <laughs> is its simplicity. We okay. throw money at problems. We throw excuses at problems. But to make the most impact, and you've known me for long enough, mm -hmm. it's the small things that move the biggest spaces. Okay, the classic, it's a small hinge that moves the, small, small, uh, the big door. Yeah. All of this stuff in here is simply, stupidly, massively impactful. So you, you've really got to come up with a damn good excuse not to be able to better yourself from here. So that's the first thing. You're going to read it, and it's also going to aggravate you. That's another thing that's going to come out of it. You're going to read it, and you're going to go, uh, why the heck wasn't I doing that? Why did I decide not to do that? Who told me I couldn't do this? You know, it's, it's a simple classic one of your, your social postings. Why have you got to be more professional on LinkedIn than you do on, on Facebook, surely you've got to be you on both of those things. So yes. there's all those kind of things. So it's going to be simple. It's going to be aggravating. And I think it's going to be a little bit smiley because it's got a couple of stories in there from the kind of stuff I get up to and what makes me giggle or what makes me rant. So it's going to hopefully be a great deal of what I class as edutainment. It's going to give you the education to do better for you while giving you some little smiles and quirks. I love it. I love it. I have it set up in my calendar because everything goes on my calendar. I'm kind of like, um, what's his name from Anchorman? 
uh, where he just reads everything on the teleprompter. That's oh, a yeah. big joke. And so for me, it's the calendar. If it gets put on the calendar, it'll actually happen. And so yep. uh, it's on the calendar. I have it squared away um, to read the book on Sunday. So it's going. Well, you've got to let me know if you hate it. You know, seriously, oh, I, I like reviews all the way. So, you know, good, bad, <laughs> ugly, whatever. I need to know. Yeah. Heck yeah. Well, the people that are watching need to grab it. So it's in the, the link is in the description of this video for you to go um, grab it on Amazon. Um, it's, you're getting some love over here too. Uh, Jenny said, I love the realness you have, Steve. Awesome truths. Let me go ahead and get that put up there. Michelle says, hi. Hello, still shy. Hey, Hello. Jenny. How are you? <laughs> yeah, there was a few coming up. Well, there's quite yeah. a few. We got, got people popping in, popping in. So, um, <sighs> What do I want to ask you right now? There's so many things that I want to ask. I want to ask for the last, I don't know if you've even been asked this before. So for the last two years, people have been uh, being very careful with their businesses, right? So people that you and I know, they've been, they've pulled back a little bit and they're kind of like, oh yeah, I don't know if I, ah. Um, and they've been very careful with things. You, on the other hand, have used that time to completely explode. Like I've been watching, I've been seeing, like there's, when you can look at timelines of people back then and people now, you can see the difference between people that kind of just got scared and did this and the people that are like, listen, this is my world and I'm making it happen. Um, that's what you did. And it's very, very clear that that's what you did. Tell me what, goes through your mind on a daily basis that sets you apart, you believe, that sets you apart from people that pull back. Because I think that's an important thing for people that are watching to understand the difference in psychology, right? So a one-legged runner is the fastest person if everyone else has left the race. Okay. <laughs> so the bottom line of it is we came into COVID and do you remember this? Cause I did, it really annoyed me. Um, I remember COVID came across and I was no longer flying around the planet. Mm -hmm. I could no longer leave my house. Yeah. And I suddenly realized, wow, I've been given the thing that no one could buy. I've been given more time. Yeah, right. And I remember yes. COVID came across and we didn't know what it was. We didn't know what it looked like. Was I going to get yellow dots on my head? Nobody knew anything. But how fast did you see social just like consumed with, hey, what can I binge watch on Netflix? I've mm -hmm. just finished the rerun of Sopranos. How else can I waste my life? Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, hang on a minute. We've just been given more hours in the day. You know, we've just been given more time. And then everyone else was going, <clears throat> I don't know how this is going to be. I'm going to stop marketing. I'm going to stop doing videos. I'm going to ease down on my business. I'm going to fire all of my staff. I'm going to quite. So while everyone's doing this, if I'm here and everyone's doing this, it was simple. Anyone <laughs> that stays up and stands strong, all of a sudden looks as though they're standing out. So all I had to do was put quite simply a little bit of effort into it a little bit more juice and I'm now 400 miles above everyone else and the bottom line that we all need and you know this very well better than anybody is you need momentum mm -hmm. so once you start doing stuff and we all need it we want to be positive we want to create impact we want to better our life you're the you're the queen of it that's why you're there people come to you because they want to better their life no one here following you is 100% ecstatic with their life. They have the standard that they want to be better and you're, help, you're there to help them with that. Yeah. And so all of a sudden I'm standing up and people are like, great, there's no one else on the playing field. And there wasn't. So I just rode with it, took that momentum and just went with it. So that, that was really how it went. <clears throat> and I love the fashion. I love the fact that people are like, oh, we're in a depression, we're in a recession. I'm going to stop doing videos. I'm going to stop marketing. I'm going to stop promoting myself. And again, they're doing that. And I'm like, it's it's like someone taking you into a wrestling match and go, right, your next opponent's a four-year-old. And you're like, are, are, you, are you kidding? Yeah, but if you win that one, you get the gold world title. All right, you know. <laughs> and then the session comes along and they go, right, your next one, and it's another four-year-old. It it's so beautiful. In today's world, 
We still want, we still desire. People are still spending, but they just want the value. And it's the old classic, you know, excellent sailors are made in rough seas. Stand up now. Do more about your business because just the just the fact that so many people pull back will make you shine. Boom. There it is. So good. Inside of that, as you were talking, uh, there's a quote, and I can't remember who to attribute it to, so I'll just attribute it to Abraham Lincoln because that's what we do, isn't it? Um, anyway, so, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Abe Lincoln, but uh, not really. Uh, somebody said, um, when you stop selling, people stop buying. And it sounds so rudimentary, like, well, no, duh, one equals the other. But how many people just stop selling? They stop talking about their stuff. And then they're like, but why do I have money? Well, what are you doing? Like, what are you, what can people buy? Do they know they can? Blah, blah, blah. And, um, and it's so crazy to me that we get caught up in our own, like, okay, systems, processes, things within business. And then like, nobody has sold anything for months. And you're like, why is the, why is the, the checking account declining? Well, you haven't sold anything for months. <laughs> like you haven't told anybody about your stuff for months. So what would, what would be your advice to that person? And then we're just going to do a mic drop and they're going to buy the book. And then we're going to, we're going to be out of here. <laughs> I'm still stunned how many people find the word selling and sales they find it rude and disgusting. Right. See, here's the th here's the thing. <clears throat> if I've got a problem, whether it's with my motorcycles or I want a new black t-shirt, I, <laughs> I I don't I don't just sit there waiting for it to come. I buy it. I purchase the solution to my problem. Yeah. And in that situation, I want to know who's got the best solution. So if you're not showing me that you are the solution to my problem and helping me solve my problem. You're actually doing a disservice. That's it. Disservice. Disservice. Okay. What is? Uh, what do you want to say for the for the book? I mean, obviously, I think they've probably already gone over to uh, the link and bought the book. My guess is. Um, tell us in the comments if you've actually already bought it as you're watching this, or if you're waiting intently for this video to be over so you feel like you can do it because you don't want to be rude. There's also those people, and I get that, and I love you so much. The, but the what would you say to them? Me. Yeah, the thing that upsets me is that everyone that we revere, Steve Jobs, Walt Disney, uh, Elon Musk, Jean-Paul de Jouria, Larry Page, Richard Branson, they all had stupid, ridiculous goals yeah. and then went for them. Yet today we're in an economy where if you tell someone your ridiculous, crazy goal, they think you're mad and they scoff and laugh at you. Mm -hmm. So this book is actually here, quite simply, to start a movement. I want people to go, hey, I'm going to go for this. Hang whoa up in a minute. I'm going to go for that. I've just enhanced my goal. I want more out of my life. I want more out of my relationships. Hashtag go for stupid. Yes. And I want a movement to start where people actually increase the standards of what they think they should have. And quite simply, you can have anything. As long as you care for people, you solve people's problems, you love people, you love yourself, mm. anything's possible. But I want people to go for stupid. Don't go for the impossible. That word doesn't exist. Never use it again. I apologize. I used it. Bleep it out. But I want people to start going for stupid, ridiculous, ostentatious goals and then achieving them. Love it. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. People are putting hashtag go for stupid. Delshad said she just went for stupid. Um, Jenny said, I don't want to miss the message and uh, leave his voice. Uh, where's the link? So the link is in the description. So wherever you're watching this, <laughs> where you, you when you click off of the video, you will see the description and there's the link for it there. So, all right, Steve, well, thank you. For coming in i appreciate you waking up so doggone early in the morning and talking to me i know it's rough, <laughs> it's rough. I did my hair. you did do your hair it looks great it looks great well thank you steve we'll see you next time adios see you guys. Soon. Bye.